What's going on YouTube? JT Jaborn here and welcome back to another edition of my DC comic book reviews. And in this video we're going to be talking about Night Terror Zatanna issue number two. This one is written by Dennis Culver with art by uh, David Baldion, colored by Rain Burrito and so many other people worked on this thing. So at the end of the last issue, which I think was actually probably one of the most fun issues within the Night Terrors event, uh, basically uh, Zatanna was one of the few people who was still awake. She summoned some hero that she needed help for, and, like, the only one who was able to show up was Robot Man. But, as you know, uh, the Sleepless Nights were the ones who turned him into the Rustbringer. So, he's now going after Zatanna. She's trying to protect everyone. Her magic's kind of, like, in a fluctuating state, if you will. I mean, she's still in control, but she's kind of in a on-the-run, if you will, trying to face off against the Sleepless Nights and trying to protect her friends and loved ones and stuff, but she has to deal with the Rustbringer. So, there's some interesting stuff here. You get the Night Terrors aspects where, like, every character faces their greatest fears and all that, and she's caught up in this maze, and she, ultimately, it's her belief in her own magic that she's able to kind of overcome this stuff and bring Robot Man back and ultimately they're able to save the day. Uh, now she kind of gives him the choice to go back and drop him off in his own thing but he's like no 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 no. we're sticking through this thing to the very end and they get ready to head over to the battlefield if you will so like this one uh, felt a little bit more like okay this one was a more interesting aspect like it felt more closely tied to the night terror stuff with um the sleepless nights directly going after zatanna and insomnia pulling the strings if you will and i really like the dynamic between zatanna and robot man for the the brief little bits that i have i wouldn't mind more of an ongoing series with these two Two characters because they're two that's one of the things i like about uh these big type of events is you get to see characters interact that you normally wouldn't get to see interact with each other i mean for instance in night terrors 3 which i covered earlier today i don't know if i brought it up but i like seeing damien play off of dead man i mean i think i saw like one little story i can recall like uh, as part of like one of those anthology books where he did that um but you don't really get to see that all often. Or Leslie Dodds, like that's that's those are new, fresher dynamics that you don't really get to see all that often. And that's one of the beauties of having these types of crossovers. You get characters you don't normally get to interact, and you get to kind of play around with that. And if things go well, then maybe in the future they get to inter interact a little bit more. But so with this one overall, I thought the artwork was quite good. Uh, it still was a fun little two-parter thing, and it kind of leads directly into this whole, like, Night Terrors, Night's End thing, which is where every little, like, story thread... Well, I mean, the majority of the story threads seem to be going because uh, some of them just don't really seem that they're going to be picked up or concluded anywhere else. For instance, uh, the Poison Ivy one, uh, which felt like it wasn't really all that necessary, even if there were some fun aspects to it, didn't really go anywhere. It wasn't really leading to anything much. Uh, the Joker one just kind of feels like you could have just skipped that one entirely. So you could have really skipped Joker and Poison Ivy altogether, and you weren't going to miss anything, like, at all, because, like, no storyline threads from that are picking up in the conclusion of this Night Terrors event. But something like this, where it feels like Zatanna, who is more closely linked with what was going on, does feel like it's going to link up a little bit. So, I mean, is it 100% necessary for you to read to get, like, the main, main stuff? No, not entirely. Like, there's no real grand, I guess, revelations in this spinoff thing. But if you want a fun little, like, crossover with her and uh, Robot Man where this dynamic is at play, and at least it feels more linked with Night Terrors that you're going to actually, like, see this stuff kind of pay off in the next issue, then I think this is one to kind of check out. So, uh, yeah, um... In terms of the issues I read today, I liked Night Terrors 3, I think, was the strongest one. And then after that, I think the Flash one had, like, that interesting kind of reveal, which kind of made it stand out. Uh, the Hal Jordan storyline, not, not necessarily the Sinestro one, in the Green Lantern ones was a lot of fun. Um, I liked the Shazam one, and I liked the Zatanna one uh, overall. The Robin one, like I said, is, is, is good enough if you want to see, like, uh, Tim and Jason, but it doesn't really feel like it's going to go anywhere in terms of the night terror storyline like the thread of it doesn't really seem to be leading to the conclusion of night terrors so like that one you could probably just do without but if you're missing some tim and jason stuff i think you'll get your fix there the shazam one at least feels like it's going to kind of pick up again in the next story thread there so um i think the ones where the storyline threads feel like they're going to be picked up a little bit are a little bit stronger and if there's a real interesting hook with the issue that kind of like makes it stand out a little bit more so for instance this one's in the waking world 
the Flash one had that interesting reveal of like what was really going on with Barry Allen in that sort of trance and really kind of played into the whole nightmarish aspect more than most of these stories. Like it was not a very happy go. Like I think this, the Flash one, and I think the Detective Comics issue one were kind of the most miserable ones to have to kind of dive into that. So, um, and the Robin one, like I said, was good too uh, for all the others. Like like I said, there's no bad issues in Night Terrors today. I mean, they're fine. Like are they all necessary to kind of pick up and read? No, not entirely. But there is some good aspects to them all I think and if you did read them I don't think like it's the end of the world like you're not going to be like angry like oh this was terrible or anything like that uh, but I just think like if you're trying to save money on this event and really kind of want the basic essentials of what you need to understand it then you should just stick with the Williamson stuff I know I've reiterated this multiple times but that's kind of really all you need for this thing so but anyways uh that's all I have to say post your comments down below be sure to like this video subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content all that other fun stuff and uh I will see you all in the next video that'll probably be the Superman and the world's finest Teen Titans and then uh we'll be good on combo reviews for uh, DC at least for the week and then next up is Godzilla tomorrow so all right well that's all I have to say as always take care now bye bye then and I will see you all in the next video peace